Hi, this is Sheila with Conscious Conversation Central, and today is Thursday, June the 21st, 2018. Happy solstice to my posse, to everyone. I mean, everybody's heard that every recording I've done today, which has been a few. So, BZ Rieger and Lisa Flamino Rush, thank you guys for thank you. coming and celebrating today's solstice with me. Yes, a, a magical, magical day. It feels like it. It felt like it for me first thing this morning, and it has really all day. Um, not anything magical I can point to, just the feeling of it. <laughs> so I guess I'll just point to me because I know I am magical. So that's okay. good. Uh, so, um, we kind of decided that we were going to speak on how to talk to our souls. Um, something that I'm really still just getting the hang of myself. Um, you know, making friends and falling in love with my soul. Well, with me, really. My soul is already in love with me, I'm sure. Or it wouldn't be hanging out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and doing its darndest to get all the way in here, um, mm -hmm. if that weren't the case. So, and I know that, uh, well, you both are really pretty good at uh, having conversations with your soul. So I'm going to kind of sit back and, and, to def and defer to the two of you and just ask silly questions. Um, no silly questions. Well, you know what I mean. No, you're right. There are no silly questions. I have always said that in any any position I've ever held in training because I've trained a lot of folks and I've always said there are no silly questions except for the one you wanted to ask and didn't. <laughs> no. So, so please, uh, Lisa. So all those programs prior that you were a trainer in, and if they can see you now, you're going to train people how to have a better connection, conversation with their soul. Which is nice. I love it. I do. <laughs> That's cosmic humor for you. It's, it's great. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I'm an old customer service hack. So, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. So, okay. So, <laughs> you know, tell, talk to me, tell me, you know, and Lisa, I'd like for you to go first, if you don't mind this time, because I, I'm here with you and I, I know that you communicate quite a bit with your soul. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I have for a kind of a long time. Um, well, I, recently I've made some really interesting discoveries. Um, so I, I'm going to say that, um, my soul's been talking to me <laughs> my whole life <laughs> and <laughs> I didn't really start listening until just very recently. Um, I taught myself how to channel. I'm going to say somewhere around maybe circa 96. 697 1996 and um, so my mode of channeling was to ask my my higher self because I, I set that up for safety perimeters I didn't want to go poking around in neighborhoods where I didn't know anybody so <laughs> um, I decided that my greater being would know you know their their way around and that I'd be safe with my my greater being. So that that's what I did for a long, long time. Um, and how I would do that is when I wanted something really bad or when I had um, something horrible happen generally, like um, a health scare, for instance, or something happening that I just didn't know how to deal with at all. Then I would, you know, sit down and have a formal, I'm going to ask my soul a guidance session. <laughs> and um, 
a lot of times I would argue with the information coming in and all kinds of fun things that um, I don't consider communicating with my soul anymore. <laughs> So what you, you're saying what you used to consider communicating with yourself, you you really don't see that as communicating anymore. Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> I'm I'm hearing the question. What What do you mean, and why? Yeah, well, I'm going to explain that. <laughs> so just recently, I've I've come to observe a few things. Um, well, one, um, I realized that I wasn't always in receptive mode. And that's kind of like, you know, having a cell phone, but only turning it on when I, you know, want to make a phone call, which, you know, would probably come on about once every six months, really, because I don't make very many phone calls. <laughs> so that's kind of how I had my cell phone off, you know, until I had some desperate need. So how it started was I was um, trying to stay in receptive mode, keep my cell phone on so I can hear incoming calls. <laughs> and um, I think I had the ringer off because <laughs> I still was getting nada, just crickets. So I started to um, observe and just pay attention to what's going on in here because I was, wasn't was sure what was broken. If it was, you know, the ringer, if it really was on, you know, <laughs> are you on? Cause I'm getting nothing still. So yeah, so spending a few minutes in observation, you know, constantly um, helped me notice something. And that is that, um, there's there is no there's no ringtone there's no knock on my noggin there is just none of that it's just me in here and and what I realized all of a sudden I started to recognize soul communication and it's very very subtle it's first of all it's all kind of in my body it's all very body centric so so I guess my body is my cell phone. Um, and when, um, when I looked back over my life and I kind of had to deconstruct certain events to, to make this awareness, um, I'd been listening to my soul and, and not even knowing it or acknowledging really what, what I was doing. And um, that was, okay, so, my soul speaks through my whole body, but my, my heart is where I get like the subtle promptings the, those are soul communication. Um, and when I follow my heart, okay, so for instance, a soul communication is when um, a prompting or, or an unsolicited thought, something just kind of pops in. And behind it is usually a feeling of excitement, um, maybe a body rush or some, some tingling, something that feels good in my body. And that's soul communication. I, I had no idea that, that honestly I was constantly receiving soul communication because when I started to spend more time just noticing I could feel that um, the thoughts that I hold in my head make my body react. Um, the thoughts that are coming at me from other people make my body react. Um, observing nature makes my body react. And that's all communication from nature, from the other person, from myself to myself, you know, the thoughts I'm holding. That's all communication to me. And my body responds to the frequency of the communication. So now I can clearly recognize soul communication because it feels good. It feels loving. It feels peaceful. It feels, um, it's, it's always my highest thought. I mean, 
it's it's uh, its frequency gives itself away. I can tell when I'm holding um, a egoic thought or a small me uh, thought or communication from another or things that are not from my soul communications um, can sometimes feel very restrictive or limiting or less than wonderful um, in a so in a a non-expansive fashion so I am just now starting to really recognize how much communication is taking place that I have been sort of habitually writing off as nothing and unless <laughs> I, I, I sat down to communicate with my soul, then I wasn't communicating. And so now I'm doing less um, asking questions and getting answers. I'm now holding it as my soul knows everything that I need to know about everything. And so I'm just gonna identify with my soul and know that, that I know everything. And then when, when little Lisa says, well, now you know, you don't know nothing. Then I say, well, then I obviously don't need to know anything right now because when I need to know something, my soul tells me immediately and I listen. <laughs> um, and so in this space, I do know everything because I know that when I need to know a thing, it's right there. And um, that... <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry, I have so much going in right now that I feel just a little bit swirly and I lost my own train of thought. So forgive me, just give me a second. You're okay. <clears throat> You're, okay. You were speaking to the fact that when you have the need to know something, it is there. Well, apparently she needs to know something now because it's all coming in. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. All right, um, here, let's go. <laughs> yeah. That's good. <laughs> well, just um, so so this is this is the expansion that I'm speaking of. Um, I can tell the difference between a soul communication and something that I, the little me, is trying to force or or argue for, because um, these are thoughts that I'll learn from, meaning they're they're new information or perhaps just a new way to look at a thing or to feel a thing or or sometimes and i'm noticing this too now i'm getting a flash of a thing i'll get a scene or um an emotion of a scene like a conversation taking place and i'll understand the energetic exchange that led to a certain thing and all of a sudden i'll just know what i need to know about it and i don't have to question anything so I'm getting, I'm moving away from the questioning because I also realized that all this questioning I was doing, I had to hold the opinion that I didn't know in order to have a question, right? So I started to stop questioning and begin knowing. And that, um, that takes practice, so I'm practicing that right now, but the more that I do it, the easier it's getting. And the more fluid now uh, interaction I'm having with my soul, so it's it's less um, my soul's over here and I'm little me is over here, and there's this big vast uh, space that has to be traversed somehow with language or I, I don't know that's evaporating, and I'm 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 starting to just sit in the center, like I'm not out here questioning everything. I'm just sitting here and knowing that if I if I need to know something, it will be revealed to me. And also, I see the wisdom in that for myself too, because I I was shown something that maybe I wasn't ready for at the time. I just I saw a flash of something, and I didn't quite understand it. And there there was a lot involved. There was a lot of energetics behind it. There was. Um, scenarios or things I, I don't quite know what I saw exactly 
And um, I dealt with that by going right into fear. I don't know what this is. This is so foreign. This isn't me. What is that? I obsessed about it. I did a little not trusting. Um, and it, it sent me into a, to a bit of a swirl. <laughs> and suddenly I, I began to realize the wisdom in only knowing what I need to know <laughs> when I need to know it. <laughs> So that also helped me to sort of relax into there isn't really anything that I have to um, to do or to force or to I don't know I was holding I was holding this need to um, to do a thing in a certain way and um, I'm learning to put that down too because I already I came here with everything I need to do everything I need to do and desire to do. And so I'm going to connect with that part of me now on a full-time basis, which felt very wonderful in my body. Like I could relax <laughs> and it's okay to, to not be aware right now because it means I don't need to be. And I know that if I'm, you know, um, required to do a thing, because I'm in receptive mode now, that's if, if I have a job or if there's anything for me to do, that's what it would be now. And so that is where all of my intention or my attention and my focus is on my own receptivity. Am I in my body now? Am I present? Am I listening? Because the messages are flowing just all the time. And it's whether I'm actually tuned into that or if I'm tuned into, well, somebody else's business or um, some external event horizon or, or something that I see out there it is is that where I'm looking for cues or am I really occupying this body and embodying all of me because I really feel like with every moment of now more and more of me is occupying this body and so really that's that's the place for, for, for my, my focus on attention. So. Wow. Well, I, I noticed that um, for, in my own self that um, the theme of getting the hell out of the body, you know, because of pain or whatever, was uh you know that was a full-time gig for me for a while right for a long time and mm -hmm. so you're saying that um you know that getting in here and and because i have had those subtle communications and i didn't quite grasp and you know because you and i have these kinds of conversations all the time every day all day long i'm so lucky um you know it's i i mean i i know you remember when you first came here um that i when when you were sharing with me that it's very subtle well you know subtle is not exactly my strong suit never has been <laughs> and so um, but it does seem for me that I, I'm getting more and more in, in touch with um, at least the, the feeling sensations and that sort of thing in, in my body. And um, well, and you, you know, um, I don't even know if BZ is aware of this, but in just the last week, I've um, finally come to the conclusion that Okay, so I had an expectation of what um, communication with my soul was going to look like, feel like, myself, and all of that, right? And was there a dress code? <laughs> well, probably so. Right? <laughs> not, not to mention there, there was also, you know, because again, you know, there's you know, all these things you read and you hear and, you know, all the different gurus tell you this, that, and the other, and, 
you know, you're expecting these magical moments, you know, that are so unexplainable. And so I was, you know, you both know I've wandered around saying, I'm not connected. I don't get it. You know? <laughs> um, but now I've kind of, I mean, there's no kind of, I now comprehend completely that <laughs> I, I have been way more connected than I ever gave myself credit for because I just always have been there, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I'm trusting myself more. And so then because I am now trusting myself more, I am getting more, but it's really not that I'm getting more. It's that I'm trusting what I'm getting <laughs> and knowing that, that it, that, that that's what that is. And getting comfortable with the, that knowing that that's what that is. And, and like I said, just, I think it's really just been this week where I'm finally really comprehending that. Okay. So I, I, I knew I was connected because, you know, Lisa and I had that conversation where, well, if you weren't connected, you wouldn't be alive. So there's that. Um, but <clears throat> Because it is innate and BZ, I know you've said that before. Um, but you know, again, I think some of it is that programming and conditioning that we've all, mm -hmm. every one of us have had yeah. some perhaps more than others. And mm, there's always a fair amount of doing it to yourself too. Uh, I, I got tons of that on board. But I'm, I'm letting all of that go now and just sitting in the knowing that I am very connected and probably way more than I ever gave myself credit for. Um, and that, that has just that knowing or just that... Mm, sort of admitting to myself, oh, oh, okay, I get it, oh, I get it, um, has, it's like it, it's like it sort of, um, well, expanded, but it's like it opened up that communication pathway a little bit more or something, mm -hmm. for me anyway. So, and now I know that BZ has a lot to add to this yeah. <laughs> Well, you guys both gave beautiful, um, really beautiful descriptions and examples how it's unique for each one of us. And there are some similarities, absolutely. But it's unique to each one of us and it, and it shifts and grows and changes and expands. I mean, it's, the communication has always been going on. And your soul is your absolute best friend in the truest, most complete sense of that description. Many have not noticed that, felt that, listened to it, partake in that. But it, that is the case. So um, have you ever watched, so I'm going to take for a moment just to kind of go quantum and go at describing different things that, so that you can hold, people can hold um, a sense of that. And, and, and that'll be the metaphor for so have you ever been walking someplace and <clears throat> it's a beautiful day, the sun is shining and you're kind of in a park like setting or, or in the woods with beautiful trees and, and you know, it's, it's not too hot, but it's warm and, and you go through some shady places and there's a brook and you're in this patch all of a sudden where the light is dappled and you can hear the rush of the water and you have this sense that this is 
there's a special alcove and there's this bird that is just has this most beautiful song that you can hear that and it you, you can almost feel the notes reverberating from it as they come out and then they seem to connect with <clears throat> this area that you're standing in the woods and the stream rushing and you realize that you, that you are actually part of this bird singing. You know, it's, it's almost like you're hearing and you're experiencing and you're feeling it is part of the notes. It's that which makes those notes come alive and kind of has that, that magical energetic quality to it. So if you've already experienced that or you just experienced it now in me uh, sharing that, that's part of what it feels like to have that connection and that conversation with your soul. So sometimes it will feel absolutely different parts in your body and communication that way. Sometimes it will feel like, you know, your best friend is always there. And, and this is, a, again, the true best friend. So there is no, there's no expectations. There's no kibitzing. There's no wanting. There's no, you know, you, you didn't, you know, none of that. So, so much like, you know, there's, the universal love and the frequency of it, and then there's love we have in the 3D thing. So, different. so the, think of the most absolute best of a true simpatico best friend, and that's what your soul is. So, but there will be times too that you'll have it, and it, it, you would say, well, I just heard, you know, there, my soul just said X, Y, and Z to me, and so. So it comes in different ways. And, and I think a, a really good way to describe that is that it comes in all of those ways for all beings. And <clears throat> the noticing of that comes from that trust. It comes from that connection. It comes from um, letting down you know, the specific ways that you're delineating, you know, what that's going to look like and what the dress code is and so on and so forth. So another way to say that is as you have that connection, there's more richness and more nuance and much more expansiveness. And it's almost like there is, there are all the different <clears throat> various feelings in your body. They're sensing of you, you can hear, there's fragrances, there's a whole host of things. Um, and to back up for a moment, when you open your heart, that's when, when all of those different, when you open your heart and keep it open, that's when all those different, um, I'm going to use a linear place so the modes of communication will then you'll see them all coming online. So you'll have the sensing and feeling in your body. You'll have, okay, well, I just, you know, um, you might laugh or something and you heard something. I mean, you know, there are many times when I'm going along doing something and I'm at work and I can be right in the office with, you know, the, um, the general manager and I'll smile or something. And, um, it must, when I do it, I'm not standing in front of a mirror, so I don't know, but it must change the, even for someone who may or may not have, you know, all the eyes to see, quote unquote, it must change the way they look because when I smile, and I might laugh a little and nod or something. So if you were just looking at me, you'd go, well, she's talking to someone. Like maybe I had an earbud in my ear or something kind of a thing. And there have been times when I've done that and the gentleman has said, what was that? So, um, and we get along well, so I, so I can, you know, share, you know, a moment of that. But what I'm saying is that it, so it does come in different ways. And I think, 
I have a knowing that it comes that way for everyone. It's just they might not pick up on all of that right away because, you know, they're still waiting for their cell phone to ring and <laughs> you don't have the ringer on kind of a thing. Um, there, there, one thing that's coming, whatever the feelings are, or however the, and the other, you know, we're multidimensional. So there's a multi media in the sense of multi-sensory. So whether it's a feeling or a, a body sensation or again a, a, a tactile or or kind of energetic sense you know if you ever walked and it feels like you know there's something touching yeah. right here okay so it, it comes in all of those different ways as well and the way that I um, And as you, as you prove yourself, we've talked about this a lot in different conversations, as, as you prove yourself and there is that connection and you're not going to go unconscious again and you're not going to close your heart again and you're, you know, and you're, you're not going to go, well, you know, I got this emergency here. I really need your help with it. And I got, I got about 10 minutes. So let, just cut to the chase. Just give me the answer. Uh, and and, oh, and by the way, if I don't like the answer, I'm going to say that I'm not listening because you're not hearing and whatever, you know, I and mean, that's kind of the way that we do it. So when you yeah. get past all that and you've proved it enough times by, because it is an ongoing conversation and it's a conversation. So there is a back and forth conversation and there is no hierarchical nature to the conversation. If you're genuinely having a conversation with someone that you genuinely have a connection and a love and a rapport and honesty and trust and integrity and compassion um, and that delicious quality of, of uh, love and camaraderie and friendship going with it. You can say anything. You can have the, you know, I mean, you can be absolutely joyous. You can be pissed off and confused. You can be all of these different things so that when you're having this conversation with your soul, um, your soul is not going to mirror the pissed offness, but is absolutely compassionate too and, um, holding the space for and also um, standing for you in the sense, but in the broader you of the 3D physical human and not, you know, the foot stomping, pouting, you know, <laughs> um, uh, lower ego mind part of you. So, when you think about that, you know, some people say, well, you know, so you, you could do it. I mean, any way you're moved to do it. So if you, if you move to set it up in a very structured way and um, through channeling or through, you're going to ask questions or whatever it is, then that's how you move to do it. Um, what I, once I realized that this was happening all the time, what I got on a long time ago, you know, was, to, to be the best, to reach for, in some moments it was a really hard reach and it didn't work very well at all, but to reach for the most, in that moment, open-heartedness that I could, to, to be the, the other half, let's say, of that, that uh, connection, that friendship, that uh, love space between the two beings. Um, and have a conversation. And so sometimes it, the, the, I wouldn't always speak out loud. Well, oftentimes I do, but I wouldn't always speak out loud. I would speak in thoughts or telepathically or, and I hate to use that word because then people rush off and you know, <laughs> one whole way of what that is. So um, I would also speak in, um, in visual 
um, I would uh, I would almost as if I was would paint a picture in my head or paint a picture oftentimes with my heart where I could feel as I could feel it answering now I could feel it coming here so so maybe if I was I could create a video or I could create a a picture with my heart energy space so the brain and my heart actually and that would be my communication it was almost like if you were little kids and you you had a you know you played a picnic or you played a um, you know a little adventure where you got a picnic basket or something and you went out and you found this great little place and whether wherever it was and you could shady and there was butterflies around it and you and you had a, a conversation and you know you, you had other friends that were physical there and friends that weren't um, and so you would communicate in different ways so I, I think that's helpful to realize that it comes in different ways and it's unique to us mm -hmm. um, and as you get I think it's a good bet to say that this time she really is frozen. <laughs> no, I'm I'm frozen. Am I frozen? It's coming back. Yes, I know. If you can hear us, be <laughs> okay. I'm here. I'm. Let's see. Am I back? How's that? actually lost her there she goes she's coming back yeah that's hi uh, can you hear me now yes ma'am yes, <laughs> okay that was very strange yeah so okay well i see somebody's recording light i don't know <laughs> we'll see how that all washes up <laughs> oh oh okay well uh, mine's been going all, all the whole time okay <laughs> <laughs> You I like you. how that you can totally disconnect things and they're still going. <laughs> yeah, the quantum. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> well done. <laughs> um. So the other thing is, so that kind of paints a picture from three different beings how that communication is going on, and. I'm nudged to say now that that's in being enhanced right now. I think I kind of said that too. <laughs> While you were gone, I said that I'm <laughs> noticing that um, for, and I, I guess I was applying it just to myself, but there are um, more and more ways that I'm noticing in regards to myself and I I feel that you know we've we've always said that it's it's gonna be individual each person will find their um, their preferred or you know you know some folks like to send emails and some folks like to send private messages and some folks you know and so I think it's similar in, in, in all of those things. And, um, but I'm, I'm thinking that, uh, or I'm feeling, I should say, at least for myself, that as I expand, um, it feels like different ways or more, in, like you said, more enhanced ways are showing up um, for me. Yeah. And it's not just um, more enhanced ways like you know okay i'm not just feeling something in my body but now i'm hearing something or oh I, now i have you know 3d linear eye visuals or whatever it is um <laughs> yes that's absolutely part of it but also the enhanced part comes there's so much is changing so fast within our physical bodies and so much um dross and um old lower frequency energies are being released and integrated and all that kind of stuff and so much more and for many people it's you know complete of the embodiment coming in 
that it's it's um, we're 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 at the next level, next stage. Although we jumped a whole bunch <laughs> in between where it was to to where we are now. So that's what I mean by enhanced. And part of the reason, and it's not hurrying up. It's not, um, you know, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's nothing like that. Uh, that's a separation ego thing. But it may come, it, you may have a feeling that it seems to be happening uh, faster or the flow is expanding or um, mm -hmm. wow it's you know I, now I feel these body sensations and talking and listening and you know and okay wait a minute um, slow down you're talking to you know kind of a thing so enhance that way because there is so much well there's so much joy from and love overflowing from the from the soul and higher self side of what's going on. Um, it's very hard to describe this in just linear language, what the, what's coming in. Um, so, You were when you were describing it, Sheila. You talked about things where you have a now a knowing of okay, oh okay, this is oh I got it. okay, that's my soul. So enhanced in the sense, so you've gotten a rhythm. Maybe it's, this is the first time uh, people are getting a sense, of, or they or this is kind of um, illuminating things and going, oh, okay, and, and they realize that they've been doing it forever, like you were talking about, Sheila, and, and now they see that. So the enhancement, the, the, the richness and the complexity and um, going from just a, you know, a, a pretty good color television set to an HD with really good, clear sound um, you know, that's part of the jump. And the enhancement now comes in where you, you'll, you'll have a communication and then, so something comes in and you understand it and you're, and you're noticing it and you're hearing it, feeling it, whatever, you're part of it. I'm trying to think of the best way to say it. Mm -hmm. and, and in that communication... maybe we'll say there's a satchel that came with it that got put down, you know, on the table. So prior to that communication, um, you were getting trusting and knowing and, and with, with the whole concept of friendship with your soul and information coming in and realizing different things or, or just knowing different things. But you, you'll notice then you have this conversation which seems really just more vibrant, more enriching, more fun. I mean, really cool and magical. And so if you're here before this happened, then this happened and, it's, and it feels really good, and then now you're over here, you'll also realize, and that's why I just use the metaphor of you know, like the sack on the table, that you're distinctly different than you were he, you're here than you were before this conversation because it's almost um but it but it doesn't it's hard to do. so you you comprehend you understand you remember you know you just are so much more in all sorts of ways and we can go into detail if that helps it you know, land better, but than you were when before you had this conversation. But it's not. It's just so. It's not a big deal. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Actually, that's the. I was going to say exactly those words because you, you've actually said that prior, and 
I have sat here and thought to myself, oh, okay. Well. <laughs> you know, okay. Um, but, but now I, like I said, it's been really in the last week or two at the most, but um, really coming to that comprehension that it is, well, again, I, can very clearly, very clearly see now where I had a whole crap ton of expectations of what this was going to look like, feel like, taste like, smell like, da 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 da, you know. Um, this magical, you know, because back in March, I was having some pretty trippy, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> trips, if you will. Um, and so, you know, I had this again, this kind of expectation. Oh, okay, here we go. It's going to be all this and a bag of chips too. Um, but right after, a, uh, now I kind of get, it's like, and it is, it's just so this, it's like, um, the integration just uh, of that and, and, and quite frankly, because I'd like to address this portion too, because it's not just, for me anyway, it's, it hasn't been just the, hmm, the communication with the, what, what, what we're talking about soul gives the feeling of uh, all, you know, because I know it's love. Absolutely, it is. It is love and we, because we are love. But there are shadows, shadow aspects of myself that for me, I came to the conclusion, I can't rip it out. It's a part of me. It, and in the mm, in the embodiment process of all of me as that's what i've been my mantra has been more of me into me more of me into me i sing it in the shower all kinds of stuff so that means all of me um including those shadow portions um and you know there's we all have them and so um that's part of the holing right it is so i don't know i get i and i don't even really know where i was going with that but it felt like i needed to say that and um the just it it just being so as you have said um I actually do get that now. And I, I, I really totally grok it, comprehend it. It's in here. And along with the other portion of my finally actually seeing and comprehending that um, the connection has always been here and actually quite strong, strong, much, much stronger than I ever, you know, on my 3d right up here, uh, forefront of my consciousness realized. Um, yeah. And, so, yeah. So something yeah. comes to mind. So, so from a purely, so I'll just talk from a purely linear step for a minute. So it's been going on all along and it's been this rich thing. A lot of, a lot of wisdom, a lot of fun, a lot of good information, a lot of, you know, things being, shown and pointed out and listened or not, you know. Um, and so if, if Smarty was talking, oh, well, I finally shut up and sat down and, you know, I could hear it. Oh, oh that's what that was. I was wondering what that, you know, okay. So from that, and the other thing I wanted to say is, um, just to kind of use a metaphor, you know, you, you wake up in the morning and you've been, you know, you've been talking about the enhanced part. So you've been, been, you've been more aware of, more noticing, more communicative, more involved, and um, really enjoying these 
conversations, this partnership, this friendship, this love affair, which is what it is, uh, with your soul. Yeah. And then you leave the house for a little while. And you come back in, and on the one hand, and because this is kind of a multidimensional sense of you, right? The one hand, you walk in, and, and it's great. The energy is great. You love this house, and, and you, you know, you're starting up the conversation because out there you're at work, and so you didn't want to make it too obvious. Right, come in. <laughs> so that's one level. Nothing's changed. Everything's great. In fact, everything's greater, better. It's, it's more just, wow, you know? Um, and if you were to look at it from a linear perspective, you might realize that well, there's a brand new computer. And that's fabric on that sofa. I've never seen that kind of fabric before. And, you know, so, but it's very hard to, to step back and tease those things out because it's just so, it's always been that way, but, but um, it's always been that way. You know, someone else might could maybe bring your attention to it. That's what I'm saying about it. It's it's always been there, and and you don't notice any difference because so using that analogy with the computer, you sit down to the computer. You know exactly how to turn it on there. You know exactly how to use that program, and that program is you know much more sophisticated than you ever before. You don't have to worry about that. You just because there's where that innate part kicks in because that's where the that's part of the um, that's part of the stuff that was in the sack that was put on the table is that remembering the memories and you don't need so here's kind of a you have access as as uh, Lisa was saying the information that you need because you know it, but you don't, you have access to your Akash and you have access to all of Akash, but you don't have to have a sack big enough, you know, to put on your head that carries all this because you just pull it when you need it. So it's very, so it's a knowing from your heart and every fiber of your being and your energy frequency and all of that. Not a, you know, just a book learn knowledge. You know, I learn, you know, I figured out how to put this thing together and now I have to repeat it again. It's very different. So if one hasn't been accustomed to that, that would be one thing that takes a little getting accustomed. And that's why there's a difference between it's just so um, as opposed to, wow, look at all this stuff. So when uh, uh, um, the off talked about, you know, I want my powers and this kind of stuff, right? Okay. So they're not outside of you. They're within you already. And as you align with that and, and allow them, so your frequency matches to have them come back online, um, There'll be very little, if any, okay, I, I got to get this, you know, a, a floating business down because I, I wee, whoops, I'll get you. Okay, no, <laughs> there won't be any of that because it's not something foreign to okay. us. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. <clears throat> but I also, I'm, Okay, it's this is not an asking, okay, that I'm about to do here. This is a this is a knowing for myself. You, you just said something that ticked for me, and that is uh you know the book learning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it isn't that. And yet, okay, so one of the things that I think that came for me in the last week or two in all of this is okay all my life I've been considered very intelligent okay I have a <laughs> I have a feeling that um, it could be because I, I did not go to college I mean you know I, I graduated at the age of 16 only because I took the GED my 
my sense now of myself is that that, not an excuse, uh, an explanation of others that I took on for myself, oh, I'm very smart. I got a feeling and no, I now I'm knowing because I was just saying that and I'm like, mm -mm, no, it's not a feeling. I now know. I that's what I thought it was. Oh, I'm just really smart. Mm, I think uh, this is part of that um, connection access to me, to my soul, to my Akash, if you will, the Akash, whatever. Um, that I was all too quick to take an explanation that was handed to me as why, rather than uh, feel it deeper than that. As I, I really have, in my view, it's not any different than you know, because like I said, it's not like I went to any kind of special schools or I, I got my GED and that is it. I've not been to call. I, you know, I went to a few courses for accounting and that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that, and I, I felt led to say this because I have a feeling that there's a, probably a lot of folks out here who are thinking that they might not be connected or something when in fact it is this connection but you may think it's something else because that's what I'm knowing for myself right in this moment and it was something you just said that about the book learning that was like oh, wait a minute um, you know so uh, sitting with something like that for oneself um, might might be it might, might might be advisable i mean because this is uh it's sort of a revelation for myself in one way i mean so what you're describing is that you've decoded something yes for you that's now unwrapping itself and that's why it's it's you know it's kind of like the spinning but 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 very cool oh look at that you know kind of it's unfolding you know um some of those things you, you they're tightly wound and you open the box and it, it goes like that so that's kind of what it is and that's what we're all here doing is decoding when this light and all of this which is information and all of these codes and frequencies come in we need to decode it and each individual one needs to decode it so you can say to somebody well what does that mean or what is that and they can tell you from their interface with it and from their decoding of it, but that's theirs. And, and um, so if you, if you look at it from a linear aspect, okay, it's, it's shaped like this, looks like this, you know, goes boink, boink, you know, that's it. It will, you'll go, okay, great. And you'll, you'll kind of try to take it, but it will never fit because you have to decode it. Right. That's, that's part of what actually has to happen that's part of the non-interference um, mm. and other of those other protocols that that um, it can't be decoded for us. Not only because we have to do it ourselves, but because in decoding too much of it for other individuals um, changes a lot of things that shouldn't be changed, and they can be you know rechanged. But um, it's just not. It's not how it's done. It's not the way it works. So when we're talking about the, you know, something that I said and that happened, that, that was a piece that in that moment that you set out around the campfire for here, that now was the time for you to decode that. And it's still unwrapping itself. Yeah. No, I, I can feel that that's, that's a true statement. And I know that there will more than likely, uh, because I can sort of hear them myself, uh, folks that are like, oh, mm, mm, no. And that might be so for other folks. Um, 
But I just know with all of me in this moment that, okay, yeah, okay, I, I might be a little smarter than the average bear uh, a little bit, partly because of, you know, how, my own trajectory, things that I, my own experiences that have taught me things. But that's kind of all of that communication too. It's not all just book smarts and it's not, uh, yeah, no, that's, and it's going to be, I, I'm feeling that, uh, that kind of a revelation for some is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. Um, well, and, and also remember you to add a component to this. Okay. Because this is not just any, any lifetime, you know, on this planet and whatever. It, it's, it's the moments that, that the crescendo is coming and happening and all of this, the entire illusory nature of the matrix, of the false construct matrix, not, not our own integral organic one, but the false construct, is coming down. This, this has always been the time. This was always the place on this planet for all. Okay. So, and it was standing room only to get on to the planet to be part of this. So, all of the experiences and and <laughs> the adventures or not, depending on how you're holding it from a linear perspective. Um, have been training, have been really nurturing and supporting and giving you lots of training for a simple way to, for, for your, um, for, for your missions, for soul purposes, depending, again, depending on perspective. And so I, I can absolutely guarantee that everybody in this conversation and connected and listening and partaking in expanding the conversation can, if they feel into it, can point to at definitely one, but I'm, I'm certain a whole bunch of ones times where you were someplace and these would probably be more recent, maybe since uh, 12, 21, 12 uh, would be a probably good benchmark for it. Um, <laughs> where you were someplace and you were doing something. And in this, whatever, it was probably with other, with a, uh, some task or some communication or some thing you needed to do. And all of a sudden, the right language to do these things and the right knowing of how to do it would just come out. And it was perfectly natural for you to be the one um, to have this conversation with this other person. And, and in the moment when you were doing it, it just was so, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're saying this, I'm going to feel, oh yeah, right. We need that. And, and so there's back and forth. Right. And later someone might ask you, well, how did you know about all that stuff? And how did you do that? So I'm giving an example of one of the things that's happened to me, and this was in, actually funny enough, in banking and in uh, moving large sums of money coming. It's one of the missions that I had to do that I originally came out here to this, it was at the West Coast to do. And there were places where I would, you know, the team I was with, we would go to these big meetings with big bankers. And so the reason I bring it up is because there were, I would sit with, a top level, you know, um, manager, and they would ask me questions, and they were banking questions, and they were, you know, like off book, where you have a lot of money type questions, and I'd go, oh yeah, we'll do it, you know, and I'd answer the questions, say, oh yeah, we need this, and 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 you know, there might have been a little smarty left me going, how do you know that stuff? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so oh, when you learn from yourself it's and really so part of me would go <laughs> but yeah but i'd be you know, in the conversation 
And because there were other things that I'd been, first of all, when you sleep at night, you're in training school. When you're having other things that you're doing that you think are social things or work or different things, it's all part of the training. It's, uh, it's, I'll say it this way in a linear way, it's compartmentalized so that you don't put all the pieces together yet so that you cannot be recognized and be on the radar screen, again, from the perspective that this is done to us and so on and so forth. You cannot be on the radar screen where the signature and the frequencies can be read that you know, you know, you know all of these people. Oh, they got the last piece. Okay, take them out kind of a thing. So it's compartmentalized from yourself, from what's going on. And as what Sheila was just talking about now, something is given and that unpacks something. So she has decoded different pieces for something that's now coming up for her, right? Um, that's happening for everyone. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, a very common refrain, especially uh, I heard a lot, a lot of people discussing it, comments on the IUV and stuff like that, in um, end of July, August, September, early October, that, you know, wow, I've been doing, I realize I've been doing stuff all of my life that's prepared me right for this moment. You know, that was a very common refrain by thousands and thousands of people mm -hmm. and, and well beyond that. So that's what I'm saying is, and so that's where that communication, that partnership with your soul has always been going. And now we're at the part where, this is what we were talking about before, the enhancement of that is coming. So it's a huge quantum up jump um, that's coming and so not always usually it's going to be it's simply just so but there may be times for little moments where you feel like I got it <laughs> I, you know you got the, the hold of the of the rainbow dragon you know <laughs> Um, and you're assimilating, and so that's part of the enhancement, which usually will come through and be perceived as, oh yeah, I just sit down at this new computer and that example we had, you know, and okay. Uh, occasionally, it will come so fast with so many different, whether it's has to do with information that's coming in and knowing that's coming in, whether it has to do with, um, uh, use the term this way, more ability. So it's the, the bi-locational consciousness, tri or multi-locational consciousness coming in. So a combination of all those different things, there may be a little feeling of, wait a minute, you know, I, I thought I had this down pretty good. So, Again, that's the really best time. I mean, they're always the best times, but that's the really best time to really do whatever that you had been doing before in your conversations with your soul, in your real heart-to-hearts and connections and the fun moments and all of that, and, and say, okay, wow. Not, not, it's not a question like, what is happening here? Although if you're moved to do that, that's absolutely what you're moved to do, so go with it. But it's more of, you've got to, it's like, um, it's coming that it's one last, this is not quite accurate, but one last layer of, um, of a membrane or separation or a, maybe a safety that you have to then say, huh, I'll be damned. Okay, well, isn't that fascinating? But you have to then say, I'm ready to take this off and go through. So, yeah. Huh. When, you, when you say that, when you say that about, I'm ready to take this off and go through, 
Are you talking about maybe that final veil that, that we all have? Is that what you're speaking of? You um, that final layer that, that you have to throw off so that the rest of you can enter. Can you be a little more specific? In that? I'm going to make sure I'm not misunderstanding you. No, that would be that that would be one way you could characterize a part of it. Yeah, it's that's not all of it, but it's um it's yes, you could do that could be part of you could you could look at it that way. That's not accurate, that would be a metaphor. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, you're not <laughs> Peeling part of the face mask off or something. So it's just, a, it's a metaphor. Yeah. Um, it, you both said it in slightly different ways as you went through this. It's standing all in. And it's almost like you are amping up and turning up your frequency vibrational field by choice and the last parts of the um, of the lower ego mind are laying down or just dematerializing because it's it's no longer that anymore mm -hmm. um well, it's hard to describe because when you get there, you'll mostly know it, and or you you might just get the last piece on camera. <laughs> but when you get there, <laughs> you'll know it. So and and that's so. Here's the other thing that goes with that. It's not hierarchical. It's not linear. So, so it, it has to do with the energy frequencies that, that we are all in now. So in other words, if you just realize that you had a soul and you just started a conversation and it's only been six months, a year, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, that would be... Okay, well, it's going to be years before I get that's linear, hierarchical. No, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't work that way. Does that make sense? So yes. it's, it's here now. It's, it's happening in these moments right now. To everyone. To everyone. Yep. Yes, At, you know, obviously at different expansion levels, but yes, to everyone by their choice. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I realized something else just when you said when it happens on camera. So good on you, BC. Because um, I, I, the comment about smarmy laying down or, well, you actually, what you said was, dissolution and you might as well, say, well but see what i noticed for myself in regards to that immediately was there was no reaction in me in that so i guess there has been um, an integration if you will mm -hmm. uh does not mean I am not saying that Smarmy will not come out for a dance around the floor because I don't know that. Especially if you keep phrasing it that way. Yep, you're right. Okay, well, <laughs> that's not in the game plan. Well, you're, you're right. It's not in the game plan. Um, and I didn't, I just, you know, I didn't want to rule it out just because, you know, the minute you, I, I do, I'd, I'd be in trouble. But but I did notice that uh, because, you know, before I was always so, I don't want to kill anything, you know, kind of. And I didn't have that because dissolution is the same thing as death. I don't care who you are, at least in my book. And, um, but I, 
it it's was, a re it's a reconfiguring of the energy yeah it did it did it didn't I, I there was absolutely no twinge at all about that so so that was a, a noticing yeah because the heart's wide open and and understands absolutely that it's all love yeah so that's a quantum jump yeah that's cool yeah that is so cool <laughs> all right wow what a great conversation ladies <laughs> i i so i am so in love with both of you i hope you both <laughs> i just am i'm i'm in love with almost everybody these days but just you know i'm so grateful uh to both of you for everything that you've uh so generously shared with me and um i don't know why but tonight feels very 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 big for me ah uh, wow thanks that doesn't even seem big enough to say thanks the magical components in the energy frequency that are encompassing all um, in these moments. Um, and again, you know, it's it's not a date, twenty first, right? It's it's a it's a energetic window right around it. Um, are dramatic and will be seen and realized for just the awe-inspiring um, amazingness of what each one of us is fully giving full-throated voice to and full participation to, even if the one that's, you know, sitting in a chair listening is, doesn't cognize that on, you know, an upfront no. um, We have all been doing this. Again, from however, whatever perspective you may hold for the energies or the roles that different ones may be playing, um, we've all been doing this. And it is such a momentous and magical um, and such a delicious uh, jump. You know, these linear words really don't describe. I wish I could just pull the the pictures out, but um, <clears throat> so I would say, do whatever works for for you in the moment that you come into contact and connection with the frequency of this energetic envelope that we opened today, and take honor yourself, honor all of us and the all and take two or three moments, two or three minutes, and do something that fits for you to acknowledge, commingle your love and your frequency and your energy with this amazing moment that we are at because um, it's just radiant beams of the most amazing uh, range of colors and feeling. It's, it's a symphony of uh, love and light and light love that is bursting forth from within us, out, all over. Wow. 
my my heart is just overflowing at the moment. I don't even know what I can't, there's nothing else I can say. Except for thank you both for being here. Not just tonight, but for all of it. And um, I will have all the usual stuff in all the <laughs> usual places. And um, happy solstice. And I love you all. Not just the two of you, not just all of you listening and watching all oh, that big A L L, mm -hmm. which means me too. So until next time, I think I'm going to go blow my nose. <laughs>